reading from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the object of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription. To the unknown God, what therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man in every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. That they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. And because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. So here we've just read from the book of Acts. Now the book of Acts is that which it says. Acts. Acts of what? Well, the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of those who witnessed Jesus Christ and have gone out, as Jesus Christ said to them to do, to go out and proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to those, he said, and he gave them the commission to spread the good news and that good news is the life and works of Jesus Christ and his life, ministry and resurrection, along obviously with his crucifixion. Now we have Paul here speaking to the Athenians on his apostolic travels and his journeys. He went to Athens and he was speaking, he noticed in the Areopagus in Athens that there was lots of idols set up, lots of statues made by the hand of man. And he recognised, he said to them, there was one there and it was dedicated to the unknown God. So Paul says to them, look, I know this unknown God and you're aware of him also because he made all things. And he pointed out to them that God is witnessing to them by the things that are made also that they live and move they breathe, breathe air they've been sent rain they've been given food and much more and he says to them all nations came from one man all mankind and he says to them about these statues that they've made made the God who created all things wasn't made by any man's hand. He has always been. He is the I am, the creator of all things. He created all biological life. He created the natural laws. He created all things. All things were created by him and everything lives and moves and has its being in him. And he created every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place that they should seek god that they should glorify god 
that they should find him. And he's not far from all of us. Because we live and move and have our being. We are created in the image of God. All of us are created in the image of God. Every human being on this planet created in the image of God. And that's not saying we look like him physically. That's saying who we are. We're creative. We have relationships, intelligence, etc. And in verse 30, Paul speaking to them and he says, The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. To repent from what Jesus Christ himself said when he entered into the creation that he had created. He said, repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the good news. But repent, what do we mean? That means repent, turn away from the sin, our sin and our disobedience to the laws of God. God has set standards, his standards, not man's standards, God's standards. So he's saying repent and turn away from that which you see in your own eyes as right and turn to what is right, God's laws, God's standards. Repent, repent of your wicked ways. And he says, and repent, Jesus Christ has said, he said, repent. We must turn away 180 degrees, turn around from our old life into the new life in Jesus Christ. Why is, why is he asking to repent? Because the wrath of God is coming and the wrath of God is upon all those who are not in Jesus Christ. Because he's fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. Who is this man? This man is God incarnate, Jesus Christ. He who entered into his creation, the perfect the perfect man, just as Adam was perfect originally, but Adam and Eve chose to disobey God's laws. But Jesus Christ kept all of God's laws. There wasn't one single law that Jesus Christ broke, not one. So therefore, he did what Adam and Eve failed to accomplish. And Jesus Christ, from the plan of eternity past, which was set in motion the mystery of Jesus Christ. The mystery, Jesus Christ said, here I am, I will go. God the Father says, who can I send? Jesus Christ said, here I am, I will go. And Jesus Christ came, born of a virgin in Bethlehem. Grew up as a tender root before him. The perfect sacrifice obeyed all of God's laws. As the Old Testament sacrificial system was they would take the bulls and the the blood of the bulls and the goats etc but these were part of the curse these could not do away with sin because they were imperfect and it had to be the blood of jesus christ the blood of yeshua hamashay the blood of god that had to be shed the perfect sacrifice because those sacrifices cannot do away with sin and Jesus Christ came show demonstrated who he is his works and his signs and his wonders healings etc and by not breaking any of the laws of God by adhering to them all and he was placed on a piece of wood he was pierced for our transgressions for his sheep for our sin the wrath of God was placed upon him that is rightly should have been placed upon his sheep. So he came to stand in the place and take the place of his sheep on that piece of wood. The death penalty upon himself for his sheep, for those that will believe in him, for those that will repent and believe in him, for his sheep. And Jesus Christ shed his blood and he died on that piece of wood. The death penalty that is rightly ours, was put upon him. And Jesus Christ died. The, the Roman soldiers took him down and he was placed in the tomb. And three days later, 
He rose from the dead, just as he said, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. And this is evidence of the judgment of God because this fact that he raised Jesus from the dead because dead men don't rise from the dead but obviously it's happened there were witnesses many of them still alive at this time when this was written down 2,000 years ago who Paul would have spoken to and got their witness testimony from that they'd seen the risen Jesus Christ and so it says he is going to appoint a time for, for everybody to be judged. And we'll read it again. The times of ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. And that includes you to repent. Turn away. Turn to Jesus Christ. Accept what he did on that piece of wood. Because he has fixed the day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. He came the first time to deal with sin. But he's coming again. For those who are eagerly waiting for him. And this is the assurance of that judgment. And the assurance is demonstrated in the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Every single person that has lived, ever lived, is living and will live, will die. There may be a few that may not when Jesus Christ comes back. But the majority, in fact the vast majority, 99.999% of people will be born and they will die. And they will all be raised from the dead. Every single one will be stand before him who created all things. Whether that is a judgment of things done in the body which will lead to them having to take upon themselves the wrath of God. Or whether it will be for his sheep, whom there will be no judgment, because Jesus Christ took the judgment for them upon himself on that piece of wood 2,000 years ago. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent and believe in Jesus Christ and his works. It's not your works. You can't get anywhere. You can't be made right with God by your works. Your works are drenched, soaked in pure selfishness. All that money you may have given to the poor, feeding the poor, that's not going to get you anywhere. Yes, followers of Jesus Christ and even non-followers of Jesus Christ give to the poor and show that they're created in the image of God by the very fact that they give charity. That's part of the image of God in all of us displaying the image of God but our works are like rags filthy polluted by our sin and it's only the works of Jesus Christ that can get you to be made right with God repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ repent today is the day of salvation amen <laughs>